Hello, it's Steve, and I'm here to pass on my experience in using Amazon CreateSpace to self-publish a book made almost entirely of full-page illustrations on the inside. And my book is Sky to Space, Astronomy Beyond the Basics with Comparisons, Ratios, and Proportions. And on the inside, it has full-page illustrations drawn by me. 160 pages, you can get it on Amazon, $9.95. This book gets you started as a space explorer. It shows you how to follow the clockwork motions of Earth's sky, then how to predict what you would see from our moon, other planets and moons in our solar system, and other solar systems. You'll get scientifically accurate results using pencil, paper, and easier than you think math. So that's the book. The idea originated many years ago when I was teaching an evening adult course at the Rochester Museum and Science Center on how to watch the moon. And I put my handouts and uh, information pages into a booklet that I had reproduced at the downtown copy shop on the photocopier. Secrets of the moon, comb binding, very cheap and participants in the class happily put seven and a half dollars on the table to get a copy of this. So that made me think there was something about the hand-drawn nature of it and the fact that for the most part it was one major idea per one, two, three, maybe four pages at the most. So short chapters. So there was, seemed to be something attractive about the format. The way I made this book was by drawing things on graph paper or quadrille ruled paper or cross section paper. With a pencil. And then for editing, I literally cut and pasted. Well, I didn't paste, I used scotch tape to do the final layout of each page and then took it to the photocopy shop and the black and white photocopiers at that time would see the blue lines on the paper as white so in the copies they practically disappeared leaving me with a basically white page. So I put this book on the shelf for many years and once in a while my wife would say you should get out that moon book of yours and publish it and I thought okay maybe someday and then noticed the 2017 eclipse coming up and thought, well, maybe I'll do that. And a friend of mine had told me about the process of self-publishing on Amazon Create Space that you could at least generate a book for not much uh, cost. And so I thought I would get the old Secrets of the Moon book out and just brush it up a bit, make a few corrections, make a few improvements, make a few updates, and then uh, put it out there. Well, when I was done, uh, almost none of the original book survived. After deciding to do the book, my next step was to generate pages and see if I had enough material that looked interesting enough to actually turn into a book. So for me, a good afternoon's work or a good day's work would be to sketch out the idea for a new page or chapter figure out what I wanted to say, what drawings I might use, if there's any math involved, do the math and check that. And then, if by the end of the day I had material drawn on graph paper ready to scan into my image processing software, GIMP, and begin working on it digitally, I considered that a good day. In that process, I was inspired by something I read years ago in this book, How to Write by Richard Rhodes, in which he says, a page a day is a book a year. And much later, after I'd finished the book, I was listening to the Ezra Klein podcast, and he was interviewing an economist named Tyler Cowen, who's written something like 15 big substantial books. And Cowen says, the way to write a book is to start writing and outline later. He says to him, outlining sounds suspiciously like an excuse to avoid the work of writing. So my goal was to generate pages and then later see what I could do with them. I knew my general direction. I wanted this book to 
take us to the phase of being able to predict eclipses because it's pretty cool. You can do that with fourth grade arithmetic if you know how. The technical process for Sky to Space was going to be to use image processing software, specifically GIMP on a modest computer that I had, to do the final layout corrections, editing, and things like that. I scanned my artwork in full color at maximum resolution 600 dpi to give myself the most flexibility editing in GIMP. The Fujitsu scan snap is not ideal for artwork because it doesn't always make straight lines perfectly straight or rectangles perfectly square, but it's what I had so I made it work.